Welcome, let's take a look now ahead to the week starting Monday the 5th of June and so we begin with the economic calendar and we start first thing in the morning on Monday. You'll remember last week we had some almost relatively positive news coming through from the Chinese manufacturing PMI data from both the NBS and the Keishin. We've got the Keishin services number out on Monday. Uh, will it show the same sort of uh, building resilience within the Chinese economy in the services sector? German trade numbers out early morning in the European markets and also ahead we've got producer prices across the Eurozone. And later on in the day, the US ISM services PMI data along with the American factory orders. We get the first of three big interest rate meetings and the decisions on Tuesday morning. The first one is the Reserve Bank of Australia. It's widely expected we'll see a 25 basis point interest rate rise. Could there be a shock to that? And will we see anything in the commentary around that that could give a steer to the Australian dollar? Also overnight, we get the BRC retail sales monitor out uh, where we get a snapshot of what's happening within the British retail sector. German factory orders, Eurozone retail sales, and later in the day, the API crude oil inventories, which have recently been rising once again, we see more oil coming onto the market, especially with that relatively cheap um, uh, Russian crude uh, coming through the gates in some of those economies that are accepting it, such as China and India. First quarter GDP uh, growth numbers coming through very early on in the day, uh, so far as the markets are concerned in Australia, uh, again looking out for the Australian dollar in re uh, result of that, that's the final snapshot of first quarter numbers, so it may not move the markets very much. Chinese trade numbers out as well overnight. And then the Halifax House Price Index here in the UK. Remember a couple of days ago, we saw numbers coming through from the nationwide, which showed the um, biggest uh, slump, if you like, in house prices in 14 years. It was only between three and 4% around the country, but nonetheless, that just goes to show how much upside there has been over the last decade or so. US trade numbers, EIA crude oil inventories, and also the second of three interest rate meetings in Canada. This one is, this is the Bank of Canada, interest rate decision not expected to move on rates again. Watch out for the Canadian dollar or for any surprise coming through from that central bank. Thursday, Japanese first quarter GDP growth numbers, uh, Australia trade balance, Eurozone GDP. These are all final readings for first quarter numbers for GDP and the weekly initial jobless claims in the States. And on Friday, just to wrap up the week, uh, we get the RBI interest rate decision, just a snapshot of the Indian um, central bank decision on uh, early doors on Friday. Then the Chinese consumer prices, Canadian unemployment and the US Baker Hughes rig count. Let's catch up with Axel with his thoughts on a trade to watch out for for next week. Axel, what are you thinking? Um, Jeremy, I think uh, euro sterling is kind of interesting because uh, we had softer than uh, anticipated uh, core and also headline inflation out of Europe this week. And if you look at the daily financial bet of uh, Euro sterling, you can see here we had uh, four consecutive days of uh, lower prices on this currency pair. Take us back to levels last traded in December of last year. And it'll be interesting to see whether we uh, can hold above the December low at 85.48 um, in the course of next week uh, when we have German industrial production out uh, for April. And uh, if so, we could perhaps recover and, and head back into the middle of this trading uh, sideways trading band that we've been in uh, for the last year or so. But if we were to slide through 85.48, that really would open the way uh, to uh, basically for the currency pair to head back down towards the August lows around $84.10. And that could be on the um, potential interest rate differential between the UK United Kingdom with the Bank of England expected to hike rates even further over the coming uh, month and the uh, European Central Banks perhaps uh, not doing so to the same degree. Okay, that's taking a look at the economic calendar. Let's move on now and take a look at some of the corporates. And in fact, the corporate uh, calendar really gets kicked into the shadows actually next week. There's just a couple of days of interest where we've got some numbers that could uh, well help us as we look towards the early European trading day. Ferguson is one of those third quarter earnings. British American Tobacco has a trading update for the first half. And uh, we look towards the States for an update from Pepsi with Pepco on its first half earnings before the bell on Tuesday, the 6th of June. And on Thursday uh, in the UK, Cress Nicholson, the house builder, first half earnings. First group also on uh, numbers, uh, that's for the full year. Full year figures out from the building services business, Mighty and Wizz Air. After what turned out to be a bit of a disappointing number in terms of passenger traffic data we've just seen released, 
with that stock down. We've got fully at earnings out on Thursday, the 8th of June, back with Axel. And anything that um, tips your fancy there? Probably first group's full year's earnings. I mean, if you look at the share price, it's kind of interesting because it's up about 13% year to date, but still down around 14% from a year ago. And uh, you can see here on the uh, daily chart that uh, the uh, share price last week uh, dropped down uh, to 110 pence and since then has tried to, to recover. And we'll have to see whether we can see uh, further upside momentum take us back to the highs seen back in September and also in May um, of this year at around 127 pence. And that would be another 9% rise from current levels. Um, According to Reuters Icon, at the moment you have um, analysts uh, predicting uh, a long-term price target for this share at around 130 pence, so just above this 127 pence resistance area. So perhaps that is a possibility for the share price if full-year earnings uh, come in better than expected. However, if earnings were to disappoint and if we were to slide through the uh, low scene at the end of May at around 110 pence, then we would probably also fall through the red line here, the 200-day simple moving average at around 108 pence and could then head back down again towards the psychological 110 pence mark where it sort of traded for most of uh, March and April. Okay, thanks very much indeed. First group, one of the stocks to watch next week in what is overall a foreshortened week for corporates at least. We do have a full five week trading week. Uh, that uh, is uh, the first time in a couple of weeks because we had that holiday last week, but it is looking as though it's going to be a fairly uh, difficult week to trade so far as equities are concerned, but lots of central bank decisions uh, on the economic calendar. And as Axel was saying, uh, an interesting trade around sterling. That's it. We are back on Monday morning at 7.30 with the early morning call. Angelina will be with you. Uh, early doors on the European markets on Monday. For more videos from us here at IGTV, join us on Twitter at IGCom, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.